19 to 24. I also want to say that uh, this marriage enrichment that we're having, I truly believe that your marriage is a, is a example of your walk with God. Pastor Limbaugh and I, our pastor before us, Brother Pugh, was animate on if both of us was in church, that how we were together is the true essence of our ministry. My mother came to the Lord late in life, so my, my dad was not in church. But then the example that she said be, set before him is a reason. So this marriage enrichment is not just for couples. It can be for anyone that wants to come to this and learn, even if you have an unsaved husband. It is an excellent time to be here for God to share some insight with you. And then that Sunday, they're going to be with us and going to be talking to us as a family. And I am looking forward to that. These are people that I'm stunned, truly, that we have had the privilege to invite them. They're coming from California, her and her husband, and that we're honored to have them. Their ministry is widespread through everywhere, and that they had this one weekend open. And I feel like that was our God weekend for us. And we need to take advantage of this. We need to take advantage. And even if you say, well, you need insight, you may need insight for your grandchildren when they come over to your house to ask for advice. So let's be here. Let's be faithful. Matthew 4, 18 through 24. And it says this. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. You may be seated. My title is, The Scent is Gone. One of the things that I missed the most, one of the things that I didn't realize how important it was, was in my bedroom, in my house, there was always a scent of my husband. Now, my husband loved polo, cologne. And he had it on his jackets, his clothes, his uh, whatever he wore. He had that scent on him. And so it was in the house. I could smell it. When he would walk by, I would smell it. Uh, I could tell if he had come in the house, the smell was there. People sell, say, in this church, I've worn this cologne for 30-some years. Uh, they can tell if they've been around me because they smell like me. I'm sorry, I, it's very, I put very little on, but it still, I guess, it carries. The scent is gone. Of course, by now, three years later, that smell in my house is gone. But I have the bottle that that cologne is in and I will keep that bottle till the day I die and when I miss him the most I will sit on the side of my bed and just smell the bottle 
just to recall the smell of my husband. Jesus, when these were the, four, the first four disciples that he called, and as we all know, he continued to call 12. How exciting it must have been to be those 12 men, to follow God, to, to walk with him where he healed, where he raised people from the dead, he fed the 5,000. They were in the cool crowd. They were in, oh my word, those 12 men, unimaginable what they saw to be walking with Jesus. What that feeling, his presence, to see the miracles and to see all the examples and Lazarus great raised from the grave. And, and it blew their mind for the first time in their lives. They're, they're seeing people raised from the dead. They're seeing, they're seeing all of this unbelievable things. These 12 men who had the honor to see all of that and to be a part of that. And that God called them out to be the disciples that they were. But on Luke, on Luke 22, 14 through 16, Luke 22, 14 through 16, and when the hour was come, he sat down in the 12 apostles with him, and he said unto them, with desire, I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. What a, what a moment to know, I don't even know if they understood the full ramification that this will be the last meal that we will have with Jesus. They, they, this will be the last moment we will feel your presence. The last moment we will eat with you. This is the last moment that we will come together as friends and you're my our mentor and you're the one that we look up to and you're going to this is it this is the moment there was another example in the book of Ruth where Naomi was leaving and going and Ruth Ruth 1.16, Ruth was leaving, and Naomi was going away and going back to her kindred and going back. And, and so Ruth, Ruth said, basically, no, no, I, I don't want to leave you. I don't. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. I had that read at my wedding. Because we were wanting our marriage to be that. Entreat me not to leave thee. To be close to the Lord. The presence of God is so important. The presence of God in your home is so important. The presence of God in your life is so important. And you and I cannot handle that with, with disrespect and dishonor. And the presence of God, you've got to know the presence of God is in your home. You've got to know that it's with you, the presence of God. We say to the Lord, no, I'm not going to leave. No, as Peter said, as the Peter said in that last time, the Lord was wanting to wash his feet. 
And he said, no. And, he, and Jesus, go back and forth with Peter. And then Peter finally said, just, you know, literally wash all of me. He was wanting to be a part of that. P Peter was wanting to be a part of that. Ruth what didn't want to leave the presence of Naomi. But it is important that you understand how important it is to know and feel the presence of God. Do you feel the presence of God in your life? Is, your, is it in your home? Sin? The spirit of anger? The screaming and hollering? God does not dwell where there is disunity. God does not dwell where there is strife. The presence of God is so fragile. It's powerful, but yet God is to be honored. God is to be honored. If you understand God, I've had, I've had the Holy Ghost 60 some years, 62 years. I'm telling you, I've understood that the, God is not to be mocked. God is not to be disdained. God is not to be looked upon as some frivolous little Sunday morning appetite. But God is saying, are you going to follow me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And do you give everything you have for me? Or is it this plastic society that we're living in? That I'll give you a part, I'll think about you Sunday morning. Oh, no, God doesn't work that way. God does not work that way. You may not realize it, but God does not work that way. God is a jealous God. God is a God that if you want me, then give me you. If you want me, give me you. That's what I'm asking for. You want all of this, but do you have me in your life? Oh, it's so important. Don't play with God. Don't play with God this morning. Don't play with God in sinning yesterday. And, and raise your hand today with the not conscious that, oh, I can't do the sin I did yesterday. If I'm coming before God, I've got to lift holy hands. When I come to God, I've got to say, forgive me, God. If there be any wicked way in me, God, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and worshiping you, God, and glorifying you. Before you shout before the Lord, before you, you do anything, before I walked off this platform, before I lifted my hands, before I prayed early this morning, the first step is, if there be any wicked way in me, cleanse me, wash me. I want to enter into your presence. I want the fullness of joy to be there. I want to have that relationship with God. It's imperative. A lot of people supersede. They think you can slick over sin and then jump around and shout and not ask God for forgiveness. We all come short of the glory of God. We all come short of the glory of God. God is sensitive. God is well aware of that. God is well aware of all of our humanity and all of our lives and all that we are. God is aware of that. But when you come to God in a place of humility and brokenness and God, please forgive me. Please, God, come to me as David would do. That was the difference between Saul and David. I'm going to highlight that in a little bit. David had the, the, the ability to say, God, as he looked at Nathan, and Nathan pointed out his sin of adultery, pointed out his, his sexual sin, and he, David immediately said, oh, Nathan, that's me. Oh, David immediately, he didn't say, well, where did anybody see it? Can you prove it? Or, 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 or I'm caught, and then I'll cry. I'm, I'm crying because I got caught. I'm not crying because I'm asking God to forgive me. 
There is a difference. A lot of times people cry their eyes out because they're caught. And it assumes that maybe, well, they've asked for forgiveness. No, I'm caught. And I'm just crying because I'm, I'm caught. But there is a difference with being caught or coming to the altar and saying, God, forgive me. Oh, yes. I'm talking today, the scent is gone. It's imperative in all of our lives that we keep the presence of the Lord with us. I want us to turn, I'll just highlight it in 1 Chronicles 13, 14. Obadiah, the ark of God was put into that house when they were moving it. And the scripture says, and the ark of God remained with the family of Obadiah in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obadiah and all that he had. There is a blessing in a house where God dwells. There's a blessing. Now, well, what do you do if you're married to an unsaved husband or a wife? God will still bless that house by the stalwart relationship of obedience to God. And God will overshadow that because you stood strong in what you believed. You stood strong in what you were standing for. I lived in a house like that. My mom got the Holy Ghost near her. She was 40, 39 or something like that. But she stood for truth and righteousness. She wasn't brass. She wasn't mean. But it was just settled. This is the way it's going to be. This is how I'm going to raise my children. This is how it's going to be. And it was. And because of that, so many times, I cannot, I cannot tell you how many times that we would be taken in the back and mother would say, we're going on vacation because daddy just got a raise because Jesus did that. Jesus took us. The reason we live in the house we live in is because God is blessing us. He's blessing you children because you just got a pair of new shoes. God blessed that to help your daddy get a job and da-da-da. You think, well, that doesn't, that's, oh, that's insane. No, it is not. I am a recipient of a praying mother that overshadowed us in the middle of, of sin, in the middle of my father cursing uh, or drinking or smoking his smoke. There was a covering over us somehow or another by the Spirit. God blessed that. And I was a recipient of a mother that said, oh, no, oh, no. I love my husband. I love him, but I will serve the Lord. Absolutely. I do not care what you're doing. I do not care what you're doing. But as for me and my kids, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to raise them according to your will and purpose and power and might. God blesses that as he did at Obadiah. That ark was in that house and that house was blessed because of it. You cannot, if you are together in the church, you need to wash your mouth with praise. You need to wash your mouth out with glory. 
You need to say, this is a day that the Lord hath made, and I rejoice in it and be glad. You need to open your mouth and start magnifying God in front of your children, in front of your life, in front of your home, and you need to get happy serving God. You, you hear me? You need to be happy serving God. You need to be happy serving God. Hallelujah. You need to be happy serving God. Put a smile on your face. Be happy. Be happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Be happy serving the Lord. It is fun serving God. It is joyful serving God. I'm happy when I said the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've never, never, never. Oh, Lord, we've got to go to church today. I don't like to say, oh, Lord, we're going to. I don't like to disrespect his name. But you set the atmosphere of what's in your house. You set the atmosphere of what's in your house. We told all of our mothers when they first had babies here that when you go into the, their bedroom every morning, I don't care if you have a headache. I don't care if your back's breaking. I don't care if you're whatever you are. When you walk into that child's bedroom in the morning, say, good morning. It's a good morning. You may be wore out from working late. You may be exhausted, but, the, but you're setting a precedent in the brain of that child to face the day with joy and happiness. Oh, it's important, the presence of God in your home. It's important. Do you know that one day of screaming and hollering and everything It's it there there's when there's strife. Whew, there's something you feel a darkness. You don't feel you don't feel the the strongness of the scent of God. It's not there. God inhabits the praise of his people. He inhabits He's there when you praise him. Oh, this morning I want to give you an example of how important it is to feel, feed the, and to have that presence of the Lord in your life. Psalms 51.11 says this, Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. This was a sad story about Saul. Saul was a dynamic man, a great leader, a great leader. But Saul had started disobeying, disobeying God to the point that the Spirit of God had departed Saul. Now Saul... Saul was afraid. He was fixing to fight the Philistines' army. And he inquired of the Lord. Oh, I'm fixing to fight a major storm here. And he, he, he inquired of the Lord. But the Lord did not answer him. By a dream or Urim or by a prophet. He didn't get... He didn't get God didn't respond to him. So Saul, in his desperation, decided, you know the story, I'm sure. Saul decided to go to a witch. He was so desperate to know whether or not he should go up before the Philistines, fight the battle, or not. God didn't answer him. 
So he was desperate, so he went to the witch who he had supposed to have gotten rid of all the witches and all the mediums and all those people out of the country and out of just knowing that God would have been pleased with that. But sure enough, there were still some that had been left behind. But Samuel, but, but Saul asked that witch of Endora, and he asked to speak, or Samuel came up. Samuel had already died. He came up. And the Bible says that when Samuel was brought up, Samuel looked at Saul and said, Because you disobeyed God, I will deliver Israel and you into the hands of the Philistine. Saul, sin causes separation from God. Sin. Because of God's holiness and desire for your relationship to be right and man's sinfulness, there becomes, starts slowly a vast separation. Starts, starts separating. It's a slow process. Little here, little there. A little disobedience here, a little disobedience here. I know I shouldn't be doing that no more. I know I shouldn't be doing that more, no more. And there's a separation. It's slow. It's insidious. It is just starts slowly going apart. I don't feel what I used to feel when I first got the Holy Ghost. I don't feel that exuberance and that, that freedom and that it, it starts separating. Whatever it is, it's a vast, and then before you know it, the divide becomes bigger and bigger. And that separation from God is so profound. Samson, when his hair was cut, the Bible says that he knew not that God had departed or that it had happened. Psalms 16:11 says this, in his presence is fullness of joy. A lot of times, we live in a daily state of depression because we're not obeying God. There's a, a, a spirit of something that we can't pinpoint it. Why am I so down all the time? What is it that I'm just so not? A lot of times, it's a slow turn away from God of not obeying what he asked yesterday, what he asked the day before, and before you know it, before you know it, we can sit in a service and look at our fingers. We can feel nothing. We can... Scan the Bible. We can just look around and say, I wish she would be quiet and close the service up. I wish they would quit shouting. That gets on my nerves. I wish Brother Robert would not sing that song one more time. <laughs> That one more time song was thrilling and chilling my soul. Well, I don't feel that. You're right. You don't. That is true. You don't. So, so why don't you? Well, I closed my flesh a long time ago. I'm not going to be doing that. I, I kept, I, I hold the hand on the spigot. I'm only going to open it so far. 
I'm, I'm not going to let God have full access to my soul. I'm not going to give him all I've got. But there's not a greater feeling than to turn that knob and let that water flow from the soul and let it come out and glorifying God. Oh, there's nothing greater than the exuberance of God and all that it is. Sister Linville, have you ever felt a distance from the presence of God? Yes, I have. Let's all stand. I'd like us as a family to come up to the front. Yes, I have. I have let things shackle me. I've let things start turning the faucet off in my spirit. I've let it do it. I've let it happen. I've let it happen. I would be more physically exuberant. It was great to see Sister Smelly this week. I was stunned. She just had a heart catheterization. Uh, Thursday and stents put in and my word she was running around the, the maybe not running but you were pretty peppy around the building yes she was on it she was going my body I told Sister Jennifer I said Sister Jennifer I'd do more but I, my body I can't right now I was just smiling with her about it. One time, Joy Haney grabbed, I was speaking at Landmark, and I was, she was running across. She grabbed my hand. We start running, and she's as skinny as, as, a, as can be and tall, and, and this is when she was well. And she was running back and forth and running back and forth, and I'm sure we did it 15 times. And I just had to, hollering to her, her ear because the place was screaming and hollering. I screamed in her ear. I said, if you don't stop, we're going to have to call 911. <laughs> or Brother Haney. And she said, let's call Brother Haney first. <laughs> we laughed about it. But oh, oh, first of all, don't treat God with it's almost insane if pastor doesn't see me do it it's okay nobody knows i'm doing it so i'm okay looking good at church no no uh-uh you are hearing god's voice every day in your life but there comes a point where you, I, I don't sense it. I don't, I don't feel that, that, where, where is that? Where is that GPS? Where is that? If you've ever tra tra traveled with the GPS that you go where it is not received, you're lost. You're lost. I've carried my phone and turned the address, go out in the woods, and all of a sudden, the signal's gone. I'm lost. You're lost. Without the signal and the power of God leading your life. If that has been true in your life right now, I want you to ask God to forgive you. Sincerely mean it, forgive you. And guess what? When you wake up in the morning, you don't do what you know you should not be doing. Don't play with God. Speak your little tongue Sunday morning and live like the devil Monday. Oh, no. No, no, no. God does not work that way. You may not know that, but that's scriptural. That's scriptural. 
I asked the Lord, and I felt the Lord in prayer this morning. The Lord wanted this to be a solemn assembly. I'm so glad that we worship the Lord at the beginning, but God, I wanted you to see how important it is that you understand the God that we serve is not just a cheap, frivolous Sunday morning God. Might as well have a statue and just stare at it. No. We serve a living God. And a God that is, is going to and fro. He's looking around us. And he's aware of our lives. I want us to pray. And if the presence of God is not in your home, I want you to ask God to bring it back. Restore it, God, and overshadow it. Let's all pray right now. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's all pray right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you, 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 Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Ask God to forgive us. We all come short. I know it. Hallelujah.